Hey, pottery peeps. So we are doing hedgehog penny banks today. Um, I've got an order for them and I got to get them done. Uh, a lot of you have asked for the um, uh, hand-built version for the birdhouses and that'll be next week. So stay tuned for all of you guys. I think a lot of you on the channel are hand builders, which is great because I love, I love to hand build too. Actually, my favorite thing is combining wheel thrown pieces and hand building. So morphing them after. That's actually my favorite thing to do. Um, I'm one of those that not what you would call a production potter at all. Since I teach um, we and my classes are student driven, we make what the students want to make. No syllabus required here. <laughs> I don't think syllabus should be with art. <laughs> you need to learn the basics, but if you want to make a teapot, even if I don't think you're ready, you're going to learn something from making that teapot. Um, so that's the way I approach the way I do my classes. So I tend to make a lot of different things because I've got students asking, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? And so um, we tend to go on tangents all the time, which makes it super, super fun for me. Uh, if you look back through my... Uh, video catalog that I've got up on YouTube. I think I only have one mug video and it's a cauldron mug. <laughs> so um, mugs are potter's bread and butter, but there's so much more you can do with clay than mugs. And um, just making mugs every day would probably drive me insane. So <laughs> we're gonna do hedgehogs and um, they're super fun, super cute. Uh, following the clothes form, we're gonna do them off the hump. And because um, I don't center anything less than a pound, I hate centering. I, I can center five pounds easier than I can center anything less than a pound. I'm, you'll have to let me know if you're into that, um, if you're into that too. Um, I just cannot, it's just really hard for me to center a small piece of clay. So um, I got four and a half pounds here. We're gonna do the Terra Red. I've actually have already thrown um, a couple in B-Mix, a couple in the Speckled Buff by Laguna. So it'll be fun to see uh, how the glazes react to these three different clays. Today we're going to do the Terra Red. I like the idea that the red's going to show through the glaze that I'm going to put on these um, cute, adorable little hedgehogs. So let me lower you down and we will get these thrown. Okay, so when throwing off the hump, it's actually anything that I throw small, I really enjoy throwing off the hump. Because you just center a large bit of clay and then you're just working on the very top. This is about four and a half pounds and this is the Terra Red by Aardvark, which I absolutely love. <laughs> this is what I marbled the donut bases with, with the B-Mix. They have the same shrinkage rate, so you can do that. Ooh, I should have marbled some hedgehogs. That would have been cool. Ooh, I just might have to do that. <laughs> So I'm just gonna center this, and I'm actually not even concerned if I have the whole thing centered, because I'm just working with a little bit of clay. So I'll pull up a knob of clay, make sure that's centered, and I'm just gonna go into the middle. The biggest thing about um, doing things off the hump is you gotta know where your bottom is. Otherwise, you just might um, tear through it. So with these hedgehogs, like I said, they're a closed form. I do want to make sure that I'm keeping that bottom fairly dry because you don't have a way to compress these until after. And so this is where, okay, so I know my bottom's in here somewhere. I can kind of feel it. So actually I probably should slow, slow my wheel down. I'm a speed demon on the wheel. <laughs> Not much better when I get behind my convertible. <laughs> my dad was a race car driver, so all of us kids have a little bit of a problem with speed. All right. So I'm just doing cylinders for these guys and then closing them up. And then all the fun stuff happens after they get leather hard. So now I'm just gonna close this guy up just like I did the birdhouses, but on a smaller scale. 
making sure that I'm I have an air bubble or something there. But again, close form, I'm not too worried about it. But what's um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating the nose for the hedgehog. Go. Push his face out just a little bit. These hedgehogs are just so adorable. And they're super fun to make. And I'm sure you could hand build these if you did them with pinch pots and made a clothes form with pinch pots. So I'm just going to take that little top off so he has a, give him a nose job here. <laughs> I love making stuff like this. It's just fun. They kind of come to life and become little characters, you know? So I'm just going to get all that slip off of there. I end up carving these guys, or facet, no, carving these guys. So I want to get that slip off. Not only does it help them dry out faster, it's just cleaner to take your metal rib at the end of everything that you throw and just clean everything off. And then sometimes I will I have a whoops, got a little piece of clay there. I'm gonna give him a little design on his nose. I don't do that on all of them. Just you know, I'm very much whatever I feel like in the moment. That's what I do. So that little piece of dried clay got stuck there. Let's see if we can get that off. When you change clays. It's a good idea. Where's my nail tool? Clean up your wheel first. I cleaned up the wheel, but obviously I didn't have my tools as clean as I needed them. Oh well. If I can't get it off, I'm not too worried because he's going to get carved. So we'll catch that then. Alright, so when you have... There's a whole bunch of ways to get things off the wheel when you're doing um off or getting them off the hump here. I'm just gonna make my line. Actually I'm just gonna give him more of a curve. I don't want all that clay there. And you'll see why on the next step. I should have a string on a wire. I did it one time. But this is a lot less scary just to pull the wire through. And these won't be trimmed because they're going to be carved. But it's always nice when you don't cut through the bottom. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to use up this clay and make a bunch of these. So I'll probably speed you up if I don't cut it completely. <laughs> but basically, I just grab the knob again figure out kind of how much clay I need. It's probably eight, 10 ounces of clay I'm working with here. These aren't huge penny banks. My um, grandson, Rowan, who is four and a half, is on his second penny bank. I gave him one um, probably two years ago or so. He did break the ear off of one, but that's that's okay. Um, but he fills them up. I think it's good when they're young. Get them started. Saving their pennies. And if you're just starting out in pottery, this is a fun um, little thing to do because so many people are so, um, when they're first starting out, you put a lot of pressure on yourself to, be, to center the clay, to um, have everything perfectly symmetrical. You can see this one's already off. But this guy's gonna be a hedgehog. 
having some imperfections is going to probably make him be the one that sells the first or first. It makes him interesting. I'm having trouble getting. I got an. I did not wedge this clay very well. <laughs> Whoops. You know what? This might not be a hedgehog. I think we're going to take it off right there. something degrees today so of course they're drying out really fast um i've already started with the ones that i did with the bee mix um i mean you can make little mice i mean they don't have to be hedgehogs you could do little mice and do a little curly tail i didn't even think about mice until i was sitting here looking at them <laughs> or rats <laughs> here is one finished this is a little one and um i just buy the little stoppers off of Amazon. They come in a box. And um, with these stoppers, I actually, rather than do the shrinkage rate, if you'll notice, it's got this groove in there. So I found that if I actually do one that's pretty similar to the same size cookie cutter wise, they fit because of that groove, because the lip hooks in to the clay. Anyway, this is how cute is he? Turned it just so stinking cute. Um, I also, you have to let me know. Um, I make a lot of different penny banks. Um, here's the owl. There's the little thing. And this one, guys, he's got a cork stopper. So, any cute, wise owl for um, saving money. Then I also do pigs because, you know, come on, pigs. Anyway, let me know if you want to see something on the other ones, or we'll just do hedgehogs today. So these are the, this is the speckled bee mix, or speckled, speckled buff from Laguna. And this is what I just closed form that I threw in the wheel. I actually, if you'll notice, these guys are all different sizes, all different shapes. This one's a little fat one. This one's a, oh, look at that. That's like a mommy and baby. I just love my job. I mean, seriously, to get to come to work and do this every day. So here's the clothes form. The very first thing, actually, I'm going to lower you down before I actually get started so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So the first thing that I do, I have a lot of clay right here. And I'm going to just trim that away just carefully. But you want to save this clay because this is going to be your ears. Not all of it, just some of it. So I trim some of this away. And then I'm going to paddle it. And if you've never paddled pottery, let me tell you, it's very satisfying. I have no idea why paddling something would be so satisfying, but it is. So you're going to paddle this. And basically what you're doing is you're making the little butt. You're paddling the little butt. So it doesn't have that sharp cut off. You could even add a tail here if you wanted to. I don't know if, I'm sure that they, hedgehogs have tails, but I don't add tails. I do on the pigs and I do the same thing for the pigs. So I just kind of paddle it, smush in that line, just kind of paddle all over. And then I'll take a sponge and just kind of go over. I just want that bottom, to be rounded. Nice, cute, little rounded bottom. 
Whoa, these guys are so cute. You could even round them off on the table. So I end up with this type of shape versus that type of shape. See the difference? And it's super easy to do um, wooden spoon, just paddle it. Then I will take this guy. I, if you'll notice, I put holes in all of them while they were drying, and that's gonna actually be one of his eyes. So I'm just gonna flatten him out, give him, so he's flat. Take the punch, and I found out by accident, I actually go through that same hole that I made, that's why I put the holes there. But with these type of punches, if you push them all the way in, it does a ring around the eye. And I quite like that. See how you do that? So then I just kind of line up, and don't worry if they get off because it just gives them more attitude or character. But I push it all the way in so I can get that line. Look at that. The little eyes. Cute. I get, I kind of geek out on these guys. They're just so much fun. If you've never made little uh, critters, try it. <laughs> You'll be surprised how much fun you have. Um, so I take a ball of that clay that I just took off and I cut it in half. And then that gives me somewhat two equal ears. So now we're doing the ears. So I take that little bit of clay and I just start, this is kind of hard because <laughs> it's such a little bit of clay. I pinch this bottom part to where it's fairly thin and then I pinch this guy up and kind of angle it off. So you end up with this somewhat of a little piece. So I do two of those. I kind of keep, you got to be careful with these guys, um, especially if kids are going to be if, using them. And I get a lot of people buying them for their kids, grandparents buying them for the grandkids, even getting them started, like for Christmas. Um, don't make the ears too super thin. So if you'll notice, that part of the ear isn't very thin, but it does look like a fragile ear. Because my grandson, granted, he got his when he was two, and he did break an ear. So it does happen. So, um, but just to kind of help mitigate, you know, kind of think of your function every time you do something. So I'm going to score over here and I usually score kind of to the side of the eyes, not like right on top. You can put your ears anywhere, but that's just how I do it. Then I score the back of the ear that's going to attach. Where's my paper? There it is. Get them wet with the slip and score. And then I just set them on there. And then I bring this tool in and I blend it into the form into the little hedgehog until it's smooth so it looks like it's just coming right out of his head like ears are supposed to do kind of looks like a bat oh you could do bats if you did bigger ears oh i might have to do bats for halloween <laughs> i tell you you start doing stuff like this and while you're doing them the ideas just start coming so then i'm gonna smooth with my paintbrush all the way around the ear And while I've got my brush, I will also smooth in just inside the eye, just to make sure there's nothing sharp from it being cut. I will address the eyes at the very end too, because sometimes you mess up this line. And so I will, the last thing I do is usually do that part again. So then I take this tool and I'll come in and do the inside of the ear, just kind of make a V and push it. So this also helps to seat that ear into the body of the little hedgehog. And 
and then I'll come back in with the brush, smooth my marks. Make them again if I need to. And then smooth that back in. Okay, so then I tend to kind of curl the ear up Oh, seriously, how cute. Ah. All right, so the next step, actually, I've got a lot of these to do. I usually do all their faces first um, because I like the clay to be um, leather hard when I do this next part. But this clay is um, pretty good. So I get a trimming tool, a loop tool, doesn't matter which one. I've used these ones before. I use these ones probably on a bigger hedgehog. These ones on a smaller one. And you just start carving them. I go around their faces first, kind of in between the ears. Actually, he could probably be a little drier. And I go around his whole body. I don't do his face. I kind of leave the face um, clear. So you, you could do the face, you just have a hairy face. <laughs> so this is what takes the, the longest. That's why I do everything on them first, and then I go through and carve them away. And there's no rhyme or reason. I just, just do this whole little, just take little chunks, little bites. You don't have to do the bottom if you don't want to. You'll be cutting that out anyway. So I'll speed you up for this because this takes a while. This is a, you know, put on some great music, an audiobook, and just sit here and carve away. I have found that if you think about this too much, they don't turn out that good. If you don't think about it at all, and you just go in and do it, they're awesome. So don't overthink it. Just go in. They don't all have to be the same depth. They just look better if it's more random. Longer, shorter strokes, deeper, thinner ones. Just don't go through. <laughs> so if you're new to doing closed forms and doing something like this, um, Throw your form a little thicker until you feel more comfortable in um, doing something like this so you don't carve through. And then I kind of, when I get to the bottom here, just me personally, I kind of go around so that his little butt ends up <laughs> in kind of a circle. Oh, it'd be so cute. So, so cute. Tell you, if you're having a bad day, make hedgehogs. <laughs> Actually, any any time that you're in the studio, turns a bad day into a good day. So, there's his little butt. Isn't it cute? I know, I'm ridiculous. But this stuff, this type of stuff just, just, makes me happy okay so now we just need to make the place for the money to go in so i usually i go in in the back and i start with the hole punch because i don't want it to crack and i have found that if you do the hole punch you've got this rounded area that it's not prone to crack if it's round. If you do squares, that's more prone to crack. So I've done two, and then I'm just going to line them up and cut them out. The biggest thing here you got to take into account, um, it's going to shrink. And you got to be able to get a quarter in there. So sometimes it's, my, it's good to have a quarter. This is too big for a quarter. So if it's um, too small, you just... Punch the bottom. Just give it a little bit more 
Where'd my knife go? Oh yeah. And then I just smooth this out and I kind of come in and just kind of carve away the inside so there's not like a big jagged edge or anything there. And I lost my paintbrush. There it goes. Then I'll take the paintbrush and just kind of come in here and smooth it in. Okay, so we've got our money. And now I already know that this is going to fit my um, my thing, my stopper. And you don't have to do a stopper. You could keep these solid. Make them really save that money so that they actually have to break the bank <laughs> to get it out. I've done that too. And then I'll just cut around that circle. It's actually kind of nice too with the cork because it kind of stands it up. I really like the corks for the owls. Okay, again, once I get it in there, I will trim some of this clay away. So it's a little thinner right there. It just kind of helps with the stopper. I found. And then I will smooth that down. I always smooth something like this with my finger. All those little nerve endings in your finger, they feel everything. So if you want, you can get, like my eyeballs are still in there. You can get them out now, or you can wait till they dry and then they just fall out. Okay, so last thing, we're, geez, I lose everything. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth, make sure there's no sharp stuff. I'm gonna go back in and just press. I don't know, I kind of like their eyes, like they have dark circles around their eyes. I don't know why. <laughs> I Maybe because I have dark circles. <laughs> And then if you want to do a little eyebrow, I will just draw a little eyebrow. Kind of gives them a comical expression, I think. Cute, 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 cute. Okay. There is your cute little hedgehog. Isn't he adorable? Oh my goodness, just so in love with these guys. So, and then I'll set him to dry. And then I got all these others to do today. Um, <laughs> so I've got my little, I might have to do some as mice. What do you guys think? You have to let me know. Or do a little rat. There's kids that like rats. My daughter likes snakes and rats and bugs and uh, she was a difficult child. But then I've got those red ones to do in the terra red. And then over there on the wheel, I did a marble one. So. He's gonna look amazing carved. But that's basically how you do it. And, sorry. <laughs> ah, you're a little, like, this one was dead in the red clay. It wasn't Terra Red, I think it was Sedona Red. And this is Winter Woods. I think he's adorable. Just one dip. And then I'm hoping, uh, some of these I do in white. Some of these I do blue, some I do pink. It just doesn't matter what colors you really do them in. But I'm anxious to see what that Terra Red's gonna do, um, if it'll break and give me that dark line I want, like with a white, I think. That'll be super cool. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day with these adorable, adorable little hedgehogs. All right, you guys have a great one. We'll see you in the next one. Okay, I have some final tips while I was doing this. One of the things is when you're doing the hedgehog, I didn't um, show it. Hedgehogs have a widow's peak, so make sure you put a widow's peak in there. This is me adorable. And um, I decided, this one, I'm just gonna make him a garden ornament. I need, a, I need some hedgehogs in my flower beds or in my flower pots. So I made a couple of them um, that aren't banks. Actually, I made three that aren't banks. So, but I got a cute little family there. I also ended up doing one that was um, marbled. We'll see how he turns out. 
he might be the keeper and going to my flower bed. And I made a rat. Because <laughs> why not, right? So some kid out there loves rats or mice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do, give it a like, share it, tell all your pottery peeps. And we will see you in the next one. And it's been a full day out here for me. I actually will show you what I'm looking at here right now. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? God, I love it when the sky turns purple. I wonder if I can zoom that in for you. Well, not really. Anyway, so I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, show me what you're making, what you're up to the studio, and go make some pots. Get muddy. <laughs>